Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. Dai here, and this time I'll be reviewing the anime Xenosaga, the animation. This one's an animated adaptation of the first game in the Xenosaga PS2 trilogy, which, if you didn't know, is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. That said, adapting a video game into an anime series is a strange call this time around, given the beautifully cinematic nature of the game. Heck, the biggest criticism of the original game is that there were too many cutscenes, and it feels more like a movie. So why an anime series? Does it stack up? To find out, I'll be looking at this anime as a work on its own, as well as a derivative of the original. If you haven't watched this anime yet, or are interested in my opinion, then enjoy this review. Obviously this one's archived on the internet, but it's out of print on DVD. It was originally licensed by ADV, but I'm pretty sure they lost the rights when they shut down and later became a Sentai. So, legally speaking, the best way to get this show is to buy it used on Amazon. Xenosaga takes place in a fictional universe where mankind has abandoned Earth and ascended to the stars. Our protagonist, Shion Uzuki, is working with her team of engineers on an android battle weapon named Cosmos. They've been holding back on field testing Cosmos since she once went out of control and killed part of the dev team. The ship they're on, the Woglinde, winds up transporting a giant golden monolith, the Zohar, which seems to attract violent, ethereal monsters known as Gnosis. The Woglinde is attacked, and to fight against the Gnosis, Cosmos is released from her bindings. This attack propels Xion on an interstellar space opera of sorts that deals with intergalactic conspiracy and conflict. The original Xenosaga really pushed the PS2 to its limits, and it looks quite gorgeous as a result. It would take a pretty high-end production to match or succeed it in quality. I can totally imagine how awesome this would look if it resembled in any way the first cutscene of Xenogears, which starts off on a very similar note as Xenosaga Episode 1. Unfortunately, this is not what we were given. If I had to describe the anime's art style, I'd say that most of the characters look baby-faced, with poofy cheeks and bizarre musculature. Oftentimes it just looks cheap and lazy. These characters aren't very expressive or dynamic, only moving when absolutely necessary. When these abominations do move, they lack a real sense of depth and perspective. The robot mechs, eggs units in particular, are train wrecks when animated coming toward and away from the camera. These are all signs of a low budget, often rushed production that makes me wonder why the creators would go to such lengths to create an arguably inferior look for their show. Thankfully, the anime's characters are nearly all the same. We've got our protagonist, Shion, who is very tough and dedicated to her work, often putting herself in danger for the sake of better data. That isn't to say she's cold-hearted, though, as she truly cares about the well-being of artificial beings, such as androids and realians. At her side is Alan, the vice chief of her research team, he has a major crush on Xion, but is very timid, pushed further by the fact that Xion's previous boyfriend was killed when Cosmos went berserk. Cosmos, now fully mobile and active, behaves according to logic and only seems to show favoritism to Xion herself. Otherwise, she can be a cold-blooded murderer without moral recourse. Next, we have Chaos, a mysterious youth with unexplained powers that work in fighting the Gnosis. He works with a freight crew on a ship called the Elsa. They encounter Ziggy, a combat cyborg on a mission to rescue Momo, a childlike realian with valuable capabilities. Lastly, there's Junior, the gunslinging little master of the Durandal, a massive ship in search of the Zohar emulators. These characters gather to form a capable and intriguing party. There are other key players, but none quite as significant as Albedo a maniacal man with a lust for human suffering. Exclusive to this anime is Kirsch, a realian on board the Woglinde, who is on the run from Albedo. She winds up being a focal point throughout the anime. The Xenosaga series is littered with dramatic questions ranging from, why did Cosmos go berserk? What exactly is the Zohar? And where did the Gnosis come from? To, will Alan ever hook up with Xion? And who are these mysterious characters observing events from a distance? Given that the original Xenosaga is a trilogy, and this anime only covers the first game, 
it's obvious that these questions aren't fully answered within the anime, and would require you to play through the final two games anyway if you wanted to fully understand the story. Both the anime and game end on a nice cadence, but important scenes just seem rushed and insignificant when watching their anime versions. The inclusion of Kirsch only serves to complicate an already massive narrative. There are various random changes in characters and events from the original that seem to add nothing to the experience. Xenosaga's opening is decent. It has a nice, untraditional song without lyrics. We listen as various character portraits glide across a star field. Around the chorus of the song, though, the animators got lazy and just tossed in some clips from episode one. The ending theme is surprisingly good, but doesn't offer much visually than credits over more stars. The anime's music feels orchestral and militaristic, but lacks melody and grandeur. The score is completely unimpressive compared to Yasunori Mitsuda's original compositions. The acting is nice in Japanese, but the English version has a completely different cast than the original game. This new cast is reasonable, albeit a bit too comic at moments. Personally, I feel they lack the same charm, as these new actors haven't spent much time playing these characters. All of these elements combine to form an ultimately unimpressive series, which is a huge shame. If you look at the level of drama and intensity of the original game, even a single clip like this. You definitely lose the grandeur of the experience when switching over to the anime. I noticed this anime sitting at a 6.42 average on my anime list, but I feel it's not nearly that worthy. My recommendation, as a standalone series, bad. A waste of time to watch. 
as an adaptation? Terrible. Painful to watch. Xenosaga does not work as a single entity. The original game has two important sequels, and this anime doesn't even fit that canon. Given that it doesn't do anything better than the game it's based on, there's no reason to watch this. Even without ever knowing about these games, it's still subpar with ugly characters and sloppy animation. On that note, I do, however, highly encourage you to just go out and play the original trilogy, even though it's probably only available used on the PS2. There you go. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to Otaku Daikun for more reviews, lists, discussions, and let's plays. Until the next video, celebrate your fandom. <laughs>